Chris Kelly recently visited the Monell Center to speak with scientists and physicians about smell training and conduct a workshop for recovering anosmics. Chris lost her sense of smell in 2012 and credits smell training with helping to restore some of her olfactory world. Here, Chris presents a summary of the smell training workshop. This week we had a smell training session, the first one here at Monell, and it was a very exciting day for me and I think for the 15 people who came to learn about smell training. We also had members of the Manel community come, uh, Norm Osmics, who took part and observed us together. I always think it's a very, it's a very special atmosphere when um, an Osmics get together because we, our experience is unique and this unique bereavement of not having a sense of smell is so hard to describe that when we meet each other, there's this immediate feeling of kinship. Let me tell you a little bit more about my own personal story with uh, anosmia. Um, I lost my sense of smell after a bad head cold, a really bad sinus infection. And when I, I woke up one morning and couldn't smell anything. And this was uh, really terrible for me. I thought, I kept hoping in the first weeks that the smell would come back, which it didn't. And after a couple of months, I found my way to my primary care physician, who then referred me to an ENT, and still nothing was happening. When uh, an ear, nose, and throat doctor sits opposite you and says, there's nothing that we can do for you, that, that is just a terrible experience, or it certainly was for me. About nine months after that, I got to the smell and taste clinic in the UK, which is where I live. And the, uh, the doctor that I saw there recommended that I try smell training. By the time I saw him, I was experiencing such a terrible bereavement about not being able to smell anything that I really hit rock bottom. I was extremely depressed. And I was, I suppose, very motivated to try and pull myself out of this, which is why when he told me about smell training, and it didn't seem like very much to me at the time, uh, I thought, well, I'm going to do the best job with that that I can. And what happened was that, um, sure enough, I did notice improvement. So in the beginning, I couldn't smell the rose at all. But I persevered. And I think it's really important to point out that you have to stick with this. This is not a quick fix. It's not like turning up the volume on the radio. I'm always suggesting to people who say, I don't even know if, I, if it's for me because I really can't smell anything, I always tell them to get three things, put them on the table, three things that are sort of similar, um, and taste each one or smell each one and see if they can recognize a difference between them. I do believe that what I've done has certainly improved the amount of sense of smell that I had. Um, I'm sure that my smell experience would not nearly be as rich now if I hadn't smell trained. In thinking about the best way that I could smell train, I decided that what I really needed was a three-part program. The first part of the program was trying to work out for myself what level of smell I had on the day that I started. Because without that, how could I compare and see whether or not anything had happened? So I developed a sort of self-assessment, um, a sort of status quo of all the smells in my world. Um, and of course, that would be take pages and pages, but I've made a sort of five-sheet list of foods and smells in nature, things in the house, things outside of the house. And you can download one of these sheets and, by all means, add anything uh, from your own environment that you're exposed to on a daily basis and see whether or not those smells are available to you and whether or not they are available over time. So that's the self-assessment sheet. This uh, was first described by Professor Thomas Hummel in 2009 and it's really quite a simple procedure. What you want to do is start with four essential oils and uh, you expose yourself to these oils uh, a couple of times a day, um, a couple of minutes for each essential oil. 
Um, there, of course, are a number of ways to do this, but the method that I have found most useful and easiest to do, and it avoids mess and, and preserves the oils, is to take these one ounce jars, um, which are made of amber glass, and that protects the oil. Um, and into the bottom of the jar, I put a small round uh, little piece of absorbent paper, and I put a couple of drops of the essential oil onto the paper. And that means that I can have my essential oil jar in the fridge, keep that fresh. While I have these jars all over the house, I keep some by my desk, some in the kitchen, uh, in the bathroom, uh, wherever I find that I'm going to be going on a daily basis, and I stay in the habit of um, smelling these oils. So while originally um, uh, Professor Hummel said people should use these oils twice a day, I was really keen on the whole idea and I started doing it more often. So I really got into a habit of smell training and I think that's really important for people that want to use this technique to, um, to improve their sense of smell. Smell training was originally described with the four essential oils, rose, clove, lemon, and eucalyptus. But of course, you should in no way feel limited by those, I would recommend to anyone that they go to the health food store and smell all the essential oils they can smell and pick ones that are pleasant to you. Um, I was really interested, I so missed the smell of the out of doors that I sourced some from an online company of the smells of trees, for instance, pine, spruce, larch, um, cedar, I have a whole bunch of, of smells of wood that I absolutely adore. But you don't even need to limit yourself to essential oils. Um, a jar like this, and they don't need to be this size. You can also use what's handy. Um, I like, I put things in here. So rubber bands, um, coffee grounds, star anise, peanuts, whatever you've got around the house that you think has a strong smell, um, crayons, uh, <laughs> whatever, whatever you fancy can go into a jar like this. And I should also stress here that smell training does not need to be expensive. You can use what's in your kitchen, um, use what's in nature. I never take a walk outside without walking past bushes, trees, grass, everything, crinkling it up in my hand and smelling it just to see if, you know, just to see what I can smell on that day. Um, you know, rotting leaves, all those smells are wonderful to me. And I think if you've been smell deprived, and your sense of smell is starting to come back to you, it's one of the most glorious feelings that there is to put something to your nose and think, I can smell something. It may not be everything that you used to be able to smell, but it's something. And I think that by always, by getting back into the habit of smelling, um, you, you can encourage yourself to, um, to carry on with the, with the smell training program. The third part is tracking what's happening with the smells that you're training with. So that's different from the self-assessment in that um, you're just uh, asking yourself about the lemon, the rose, the clove, and whatever other essential oils you're training with. And um, I rate those um, from you know, zero, I experience nothing at all, to um, 10, I experience them fully. And so you can take a look at these uh, charts that I've developed for that. They're available to download as a PDF. And I think that altogether, the system gives the patient a sort of feeling of having a bit more control over what's happening. And I found that, especially when I was in the very darkest part of my um, anosmia experience, quite empowering to feel like I could do something actively for myself. It was just a, a, a great positive experience. A lot of us sort of stayed on longer after that and kept chatting. Um, and it was a great, uh, it was great to see a community being built. As anosmics, we have a really unique experience um, and it is a wonderful thing to be able to share my experience with the people here at the Monell Center um, who've been so generous with their time. And I would like um, any anosmic who is interested in learning more about their condition um, to join me and uh, support the work of the Monell Center, which is doing so much to advance 
um, research into this um, poorly understood condition. So um, my name is Chris Kelly again. I'd like to thank everyone at the Manel who has given me their time and expertise during these last couple of days. Um, and I hope that you're all smelling good uh, in the future. <laughs> thank you very much.